So this one is the assignment which is related to analysis of organic compound. Now we can analyze an organic compound in the first question. Ethanol can be oxidized slowly to ethanol. State how a sample of ethanol could be tested to confirm the presence of ethanol and state uh, what will what you would observe. Like what we will see if we analyze the sample. So what is the test to check the presence of aldehyde? We can use a toline or felling or Benedict reagent. Or even infrared spectroscopy can also be used. And if we use a toline reagent, then it will be like a silver mirror or a layer of silver will form. If you use spelling or Benedict, then the solution changes the color from red to uh, blue to red, and there will be precipitates. So if we are using a felling or Benedict solution, then the observation, what we'll observe the blue solution changes to uh, red brown or uh, red precipitate will be there. The blue solution will change the color and it will form a red precipitate. The second question, in each of the following question, you should draw the structure of a compound in a space provided. Draw the structure of alkene that would Form when one, two, dibromo, three methyl butane react with bromine. So when alkene reacts, there will be an addition reaction. So we have to draw the structure of that alkene, which that would form one, two, dibromo, like and three methyl butane. So if I draw the structure of a product. Butte means four carbon, so there will be four carbon atoms will be there. One, two, dibromo, first and second position, we will have bromine. First, I am drawing a product, and then I will show how you can work out to four, draw the structure of three methyl group is there. Third position, we have a carbon chain, a methyl group is there. And then remaining hydrogen. Now, what will happen in addition reaction, the double bond breakdown and uh, these bromine atoms added to a structure. So if it was not there, because we have to draw the structure of alkene, so if these two bromines are not there, then this will be the structure of a compound which react to form 1,2-dibromo-3-methyl butane. Is it uh, clear? We have to draw the structure of this alkene. Then the next one, draw the structure of alcohol with a molecular formula C4H10O that resists oxidation and by acidified potassium dichromate. Means we have to draw an alcohol, means we have to draw tertiary alcohol because tertiary alcohol cannot be. Primary can be oxidized to aldehyde, then further oxidation to carboxylic. Secondary can oxidize to ketone and tertiary cannot be. With a molecular formula of C4 and H10. So we have to draw basically tertiary. So to be tertiary, the carbon which is attached with the functional group OH should have three carbon chains. So one, two, and three. And so already now C4, and then we put hydrogen. This will have three hydrogens. This will have three hydrogens. This will have three hydrogens. And so total 10 hydrogen oxygen. So this is a tertiary alcohol which resists oxidation or cannot be oxidized by potassium dichromate. The next one, draw the structure of alkene that has a peak due to the molar ion or molecular ion at 40 in a mass spectrum. So we have to find which alkene should have a peak like the molecular ion peak is 42. So if we check the masses, like if we have ethene, which is C2NH4, so total mass carbon will be 12, 
multiply by 224 plus 4, so it will be 28, molecular ion. But when you check for propane, C3, propene, C3H6, so 12 multiplied by 3, 36 plus 6, that will make 42. So it means it is, we have to draw the structure of propene. You can also work out the number of car, uh, carbon by using this formula, like we have the general formula of alkene, CN, H2N. So the total mass of this CN, H2N should be 42. So if carbon is 12 and there are n carbons, so 12n plus hydrogen is 1 and there are 2n hydrogens, so the total mass will be 2n is equals to 42. Like carbon is 12 multiplied by n, hydrogen is 1 multiplied by 2n because mass of one hydrogen, each hydrogen is 1 and there are 2n hydrogens in this, that's why it's 2n. So this will be 14n is equals to 42 or n is equals to 42 divided by 14 which is 3. So it means the number of the carbon should be 3 here. So it will be C3 and H6. So we have to draw structures. So it will be CH. So in this case, it will be CH double bond CH, CH2 double bond CH, and then CH3 will be there. Question 4, draw structure of organic product with a relative molecular mass of 73 uh, made by reaction between 2-bromobutane and ammonia. So if we have 2-bromobutane, like second position if we have bromine, so CH3 is there, CH, Br, CH2, CH3. Reacted with ammonia, ammonia is NH3. But when we write, like example, this will be NH2, NH. So it's NH3, but NH2 is partial negative and one of the H is partial positive. And here, bromine is partial negative and carbon is partial positive, as they have difference in their electronegativity. So it's a substitution reaction is there. This NH2 will take position of bromine and bromine will take position. So the, the because we want the product state the structure of organic product because there is another product but we have to just state the structure of this organic product in which a substitution reaction will occur so the final product will be ch3 ch is already there and in place of that bromine now it's nh2 then it is ch2 CH plus the hydrogen bromide or ammonium bromide will be there. But in this case, as we don't only really need the organic product, this is the organic product. And for confirmation, draw the structure of organic product with a relative molar mass, molecular mass of 73. So when you find the molecular mass, it will come out as 73. In question three, a conversion of compound A into compound B achieve in two steps. So first we have halogen alkane, then we substitute like, first we have halogen alkane. Basically, if you check what, what is done here, first we have a primary halogen alkane and then we convert it into tertiary halogen alkane. So the intermediate compound X has absorption of 1000 650 centimeter inverse, like the this is a wave number. Identify the compound X and explain your answer. So for this, you need a data booklet because without a data booklet, without a data booklet, you cannot solve. So first you have to use the data booklet in exam, it will be there. So this actually is the absorption for carbon-carbon double bond, like 1,650. So identify compound X and explain your answer. So first, what my, what will happen? There will be elimination reaction. Like we have this, we eliminate, like remove hydrogen from here and bromine from here. So as a result, it will form CH3, CH3,
then double bond is there CH2 and hydrogen bromide is being lost. So it is 2-methyl propene or it's methyl propene, you can also say. So absorption at this level, when you will check the data booklet, the absorption is 1,650. What this gives an evidence, it gives an evidence that there's a carbon-carbon double bond. And so if carbon-carbon double bond, how it will be there? If hydrogen and bromine are removed, so as a result, it will form a carbon-carbon double bond. And the next step, how a bromine is added, then we again reacted with hydrogen bromide or HBr or addition reaction occur. As a result, because bromine can be added to first carbon or it can be added to second carbon. Both are there. There will be a major and minor product, but both possibilities are there. So 1650 shows that there is a carbon-carbon double bond. For each step in this conversion, give the reagent in essential condition uh, required and outline a mechanism. So for this question, like example, for we have to outline the mechanism how this happened or occurred. For the second part. So the first one, because we want elimination reaction. So how elimination reaction can happen or occur for halogen alkene? So we need potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide in alcoholic medium and we should warm. But for second one, hydrogen bromide is there, HBr is added to the molecule. So that is The second part, so in the first part, what we need, we need potassium hydroxide, but we, because it's an elimination reaction, so we need alcoholic potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, and it must be warm. The second one, we need HBr, hydrogen bromide is only needed as a reagent. And the mechanism for the first, like step one mechanism, And the step two mechanism. So what happened in step one? Step one is a elimination reaction. So how elimination happened? Basically, the OH ion is there, which is attracting the hydrogen. So if I draw the structure of the original molecule, which is CH3, CH3, CH2, Br, and then H is there. So this will be partial positive negative. Bromine will try to break a bond with carbon. And this carbon will take both of these electrons. And this hydrogen or H plus is attracted towards the lone pair of hydroxide, OH, which is from the KOH, or it is also from water. But mainly it's from KOH, potassium hydroxide. So as a result, what will happen? Elimination reaction will be there. So this will be CH3. C is there. So this carbon break the bond. This carbon, the right-hand side carbon also break the bond. So there will be a double bond between them. And this will be CH2. This is the elimination reaction. Then after elimination, what happens in step two? That is a substitution. That is a addition reaction. So electrophilic addition reaction, like the reagent now is HBr, hydrogen bromide is there, in which hydrogen is partial positive, bromine negative. Bromine will take both of these electron pairs, and this hydrogen is attracted towards the electron rich side. So first the bond breaking will, like, hydrogen is added to one side so it will form a carbon cation and the carbon cation which is surrounded by more alkyl group is more stable like example this uh, carbon can be a carbon cation on the left hand side or right hand side but the carbon cation which is having more alkyl groups will be more stable so as a result it will be ch3 
CH3, CH3, and this will be a carbon cation. Why I form this carbon cation? Because this is more stable as it is surrounded by more alkyl groups. If a hydrogen is added to this carbon in the center, then this will be the carbon cation, but it is surrounded by only one carbon, like this overall is one carbon chain, that's why it is less stable. So carbon cation, which is surrounded by more carbon or alkyl groups having greater stability, as a result, this will be more stable. Then the Br, which is having a lone pair, extra pair, a charge, it is forming a bond with carbon cation. And the final product will be CH3. CH3, Br is attached, and then CH3. So that's how the first one is elimination. The second one is electrophilic addition reaction. Is it uh, clear, this one? The mechanism for both the elimination as well as, so this one is addition, electrophilic, and this one is elimination. So whenever a halogen alkane form alkene, this will be elimination. And when alkene form one product, alkene reactions are electrophilic addition reactions. As it is there in unit one. The table below shows the structure of three isomers with a molecular formula C5H10. So different isomers are there. Complete the table by naming isomer three. You can see they have different functional groups. This one is aldehyde, that's why the name is Al. This one is OH group and alkene, so it's en and alcohol, so that's why enol, enol is there. And this one is carbon, so like C double, carbonyl group is there, it's surrounded by a carbon chain, so it means it is a ketone. And what is which ketone? One, two, three, four, five. So, and second position, second carbon is having a carbonyl group, so it is pent N2 on. So it is pent N2 on. Next, state the type of structural isomer shown in these three. So as you can see, they all they have the same molecular formula but different functional groups. So what we call this type of isomerism, we call that as a functional group isomerism. So structural isomerism is divided into functional group, position, and chain isomerism. So this is a functional group isomerism because they have different functional groups. So here, the answer will be functional group isomerism. Like two or more molecules have same molecular formula but different functional groups. The compound Z is pen three into all is stereoisomerism. Stereoisomer means like it exhibit a geometrical isomer due to the presence of a carbon carbon double bond. Draw the structure of Z. So compound we have to draw like example. The compound Z, uh, compound pen three, yeah, Z pen three into all stereoisomer of pen three into all E. So we have to draw Z. So when we are drawing the Z, it means we have to draw the heavy groups on the same side. If it was E, then the heavy groups on the opposite side we will draw. Like in this case, this is E. Why E, when you compare the heavy groups due to the presence of carbon-carbon double bond, there's a restriction in the geometry. So heavy group in this one is at the top, the other one is at the bottom. So this is E. But we want to draw Z, means the heavy groups, the groups which are having a greater mass should be on the same side. So what we simply do at the bottom, the space is given, so there, if you want to draw Z, we just change, switch the position. Like CH, OH, and CH3. CH, 
OH and CH3 will be there at the top and H will be there at the bottom. So it will become Z pen 3 in chloride, which is a geometrical isomer. So whenever carbon carbon double bond is there due to the restriction of the uh, space, it exhibits geometrical isomer. Identify the feature of a double bond in E pen 3 in to all, and that is causing the two compounds to be stereoisomer. So, what is the reason why the two compounds are stereoisomer? Because there is a restricted rotation about carbon carbon double bond. Because the carbon can form four bond. Two of them are in the same plane, one is in, another one is out. I have 3D structure. But when there's a carbon carbon double bond, so if any group is there, like example, A, B, C, and D, these groups can be anywhere, like A can be in the same plane, A can be into, or A can be out. Same thing for others. But when carbon-carbon double bond is there, then now we have a restriction in the rotation. Like there are only few possibilities left, either a molecule which is attached to a carbon or a group or a, a group of atoms attached to a carbon, either they will be in or out. For example, if A is here, what is the second possibility? That A might be in or A might be out. Same thing, A might be in or A might be out. So there's no other possibility, only two possible. Before that, when there was a single bond of the carbon, there are three different, like two ch chances are there, 50% of the chance they are in the same plane. One, 25% uh, they might be in, 25% it might be out. But in this case, it's 50-50, like 50% in, 50% out. There's no other chance. So due to the presence of the double bond, the, it restrict the rotation or the space available for the atoms to combine due to the carbon-carbon double bond. Then a chemical test can be used to distinguish between the uh, se between separate sample of isomer two and isomer three. Identify a suitable reagent to test uh, for the test and state what you observe with isomer two and three. So isomer two is aldehyde, isomer three is ketone. So if you want to distinguish aldehyde and ketone, what we can do? We can add a a felling or Benedict solution. So as a result, it will form a red solid or red precipitate will be there. But in case of uh, ketone, there will be no visible change. If we add felling or Benedict solution, this will form red precipitate, that is copper one oxide. But isomer, there will be no change. It will remain blue. And this is already, originally it is blue in color. It will remain blue. There will be no change. The following is infrared spectrum of one of the isomer in one, two, or three. Percentage transmittance is there. Reduce which isomer, one, two, three would give the infrared spectrum, you may find it has referred to a table, one in the data sheet. Like, what you can do, you can simply identify from the peaks, how many peaks are there or what are the absorption. So when you check, because this absorption for OH group is there, 1,650 is for carbon-carbon double bond. So this is due to carbon-carbon double bond and this is due to OH when you check the data booklet. So using a data booklet, because if it is an aldehyde or ketone, there should be C double bonded with OP. But it, what it's having OH, it is having C double bonded C. So what it gives an evidence? This gives an evidence that this is isomer 1, which consists of Isomer 1, why isomer 1? Because it consists of carbon carbon double bond and there's the OH. If it was an aldehyde or ketone, then it should be carbonyl group C double bonded with OP should be the major one. But because there's a, also a broad peak of OH, which gives an evidence that this is C 
So deduce which of the isomer would give this infrared spectrum. So which isomer will give? That should be isomer one. And what is the reason for having this isomer one? You can see a strong or a broad peak is there, which is due to OH. And there is absorption of 1060 due to carbon carbon double bond. Like this feature one and feature two, which and the functional group. So this feature, a broad peak, gives an evidence that there is a OH. And this is around 1650. This peak gives an evidence there is a carbon carbon double bond. So these are some questions from analysis of organic compound.